All right, guys, so that's going to take us into our next segment, which is a fun little thing that we decided to do. Basically, the rules are this. We're going to be reviewing a random LEGO Star Wars set, and it can literally be any LEGO Star Wars set that has ever been made. So we randomly chose one. We got the year 2002, and we got the 10th set from that year, which actually happened to be Django Fett's Slave One. Um, the thing about this is there's no guarantee that either of us ever owned this <laughs> set. Or that we know anything about it. So this will not only be like a learning experience for us to like read up on it and see what it has, but also it can show like our knowledge uh, to you guys about, you know, either, you know, how much we know about Lego Star Wars sets that we never owned or anything like that. So um, I never owned this set. Garrett never owned this set either. The set came out when I was not really into Lego Star Wars, but I do have a fond memory of being a child and like really wanting this set because this was actually something that we saw in the Lego Star Wars game in that first mission in Episode Two, and I remember seeing it. I was like, oh, like I wish I had a Slave One because the only other Slave One was the tiny Boba Fett one. And I definitely didn't want that. So I was like, oh, like, it'd be really cool to have a Slave One. And, of course, like, a Django Fett minifigure and a Young Boba minifigure. Um, but just kind of looking at it, like, it, Lego has definitely made a lot of advances um, just like, in regards to the design. It doesn't look really too far off from the playset versions of the Boba Fett ones, like, insofar as, like, they pretty much, I think, kept the same cockpit in the same, like, slopes on the front and the back. Yeah. But... I mean, Honestly, for a 2002 set, it looks pretty good. Like, yeah, it, it... Yeah. No, it looks better than, like, the TIE Fighters we would have gotten around that time. Yeah. Um, and I think um, one other cool thing about it was, like, um, I believe on the bottom, there was, like, a little cargo thing connected to a magnet, so you could, like, pull that out. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when, like, it was still using magnets. It seemed like they did that a few times in sets of that wave. Um... I don't know, do you have any strong opinions on it either way? Uh, no, like I said, I think it holds up pretty well for a 2002 set. And look, um, a lot of the older, like the Slave 1 playset play style Slave 1s that we've gotten throughout the years, really the only one that I think looks pretty terrible is the very first one we got. Oh, yeah, which that, is, that Boba Fett You one. know, it's, yeah. it is what it is. But this one and some of the other ones I've always thought held up pretty well. And we're usually at pretty good price points. They were like 60 or yeah, so. Yeah, I think this you, one would have been 50 bucks. 50 or $60, so... Uh, and always the Boba Fett and Django Fett figures. I know a lot of people have very fond feelings for the old style. Yeah, no, and that that Django figure still commands a pretty hefty price. It's very classic Star Wars. Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not huge into nostalgia, like I was mentioning <clears throat> earlier, but I will admit that that's a cool figure and would be one. It would be a cool one to have. Yeah, um, I think. As, so I don't know. Did you own the uh, 2006 Boba Fett Slave one? My first Boba Fett was the the UCS UCS Boba Fett. Wow, that's crazy. So I had the 2006 one, and I know like on that one you could like peel open the front and you can shoot out one of those like spring loaded missiles from it. So I thought that was pretty cool. This one didn't have that. So it is interesting to see how Lego like over time has improved upon this basic design and kind of made it a little bit more complicated. Right. I didn't own the most recent playset Boba Fett Slave one, but I think like looking. At Get some of the pieces they used on that one compared to this one like they definitely like kept the same general idea like the concept of it but they built upon it to make a much better design years later on yeah and i will say i was as a kid i probably would have loved this set just because i liked any set that was like a, a ship that had like storage space and right like yeah. little compartments that could open up and yep. stuff and the slave ones the early ones always had stuff like that yeah little secret hidden compartments along the side so yeah. i would have loved that to have that so i could put like their guns and stuff hidden throughout it oh uh, yeah you could put the uh prisoners uh, I don't know if they had actual prisoners. <laughs> I, I, I thought they could, they probably would. I don't know. I'm pretty sure, like, in canon somewhere, there's, like, a prisoner holding the slave one. Django takes his prisoners dead. That is true. Well, no, he doesn't. He sends Zam to do his dirty work <laughs> for whatever reason. Okay, that's pretty much going to finish up this segment, guys. Let's move on to thoughts on the rumors about future sets. Hey, guys. Welcome back to LEGO Star Wars Talk. Here we're going to be talking about some of the rumor sets, so there's um, some coming from the Han Solo movie, as well as an assortment of sets from various phases of Star Wars eras, so let's dig right into it. First, we're going to start with the Han Solo movie set, so the first one is the Imperial Patrol Battle Pack. We've seen some of the figures in it. I believe it comes with um, one of the, like, uh, scout, like... Troopers, or not, it's not even a scout trooper, it's just like a new stormtrooper, or I think it's like a patrol yeah, they're, trooper. they're called like range troopers or something. Yeah, range troopers, yeah. So a lot of people were like excited about this because there's a return of the like recessed eyes um, and the black head, so no angry clown face uh, for these guys. Is it is that even confirmed though? Because like I, that was just what it looked like in some of the pictures. I just think the the, the eyes are just recessed, the, the but the mold still... on, I, I don't think 
it's going to be Blackhead. Yeah, um, I, I guess we'll have to see. Either way, it really doesn't matter to me. No, it, I never whatever. had any affection towards those. In fact, those were inaccurate compared to like the new Clone Troopers. Yeah, the new ones are much better in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for this battle pack. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what these range troopers can do. Um, I'm also really excited to finally have a cheap way to get that Imperial Officer hat. Guys, you don't know what we have been through trying to find those hats. If you look on Bricklink in the United States, I think there's like maybe one or two sellers that have like a couple hats for like three or four dollars each. So having this battle pack, being able to get not only just the uh, Imperial officer, like the jumpsuit with the, not a jumpsuit, but like their uniform with the new rank, but also being able to get the hat with the insignia on it. I'm so happy about that, dude. I'm going to cash out on these battle packs <laughs> so I can get, I don't know, like hats for days. Like, I will never have to worry about buying another one of those hats again. Yep. No, the hat is great. And it's actually the the officer himself has a unique rank that I don't think we've gotten yet. Right, so yep. It sure does. It's always nice to get new Imperial officers. And it also comes with a one of the like the Death Star Troopers or yeah. like a, ty- a similar type of trooper. Obviously, I don't think the Death Star is going to be in this movie. The big helmet boy. The big helmet boy. Actually, and this, this, one's a this big is a helmet big girl. girl. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> yeah. The only annoying thing is she doesn't come with like just the the black kind of uniform. She has the armor. It's the, from ground, the ground crew. crew yeah. Which so. I, mean, I don't. I feel like I have so many of those figures <laughs> and nothing to do with them. So yeah, I don't know about that. I only um, have one of the Death Star troopers, so I'll I'll take them in any form I can get them. At least those hats, I can maybe switch some stuff around so I can get a right, yeah, repurpose them, repurpose them. But so I'm overall very excited for that battle pack. All right, so next one is Moloch's land speeder. So there's, I think we can actually talk about both land speeders about together. Both speeders. Um, so there's Moloch's and there's Hans. I imagine there's some sort of land speeder chase that would seem to be kind of what's being implied by the pictures that we've seen. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really care for the look of either of them. I feel like Hans land speeder looks like a pickup truck. Like they cut off the back and added some weird thing onto it. And there's so I don't know. So and I think the thing that really inspired this, like my feelings towards this, is I don't know if you've seen it, but there were actually leaked pictures of what they look like in real life. And it looks silly. So I don't know if you've seen it, but I don't know. I, I'm not a fan. Um, and I mean, it, like, this could always change. Like, I felt the same way about the ATM6 Lego set before I saw it, like, in action in the mm-hmm. movie. But, I mean, I think, I don't know, I don't really care for the sets. I think the figures look very interesting, like, especially getting the hounds. Hopefully this is, like, an implication that we're going to get some Volt Texas at some point. I know that's probably far down the that's, line. But that's wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but, like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, like, maybe a Volt Tex. I don't know. Um, but as for the sets, like, I don't know, how do you feel about them? I, I, I like both of them, actually. Um, they both look very well designed, like, with the, the amount of like snot techniques on both of them, yeah, I'll give you that. They're very, they're very sleek looking, and they look like I was. They kind of look like speeders. Like I don't know. It's it's cool to get more speeders that very that look very Star Warsy. Yeah, and I'll say like because they've got similar shapes to like the Coruscant speeders, but it's clearly from like they're more kind of rickety, I guess. So right, it's yeah. like you know, it's like it's like seeing the nice cars of Coruscant, and then you go and like to like the more rural area or whatever right, yeah. and it's like not as nice cars okay so, yeah I, I can see that uh that comparison and yeah the, like the figures are like i don't know like it'll be cool to have a young han solo i guess and those hounds are it's it's cool to get star wars creatures so. yeah oh yeah definitely always cool to get star wars creatures. no overall i i, I i'm i'm fairly excited to see what they look like in person i think they're well-designed sets i think i'm mostly ambivalent towards them but what i am not ambivalent towards is this tie fighter coming out yes dude how sweet is this i'm so excited for this TIE Fighter. Uh, I, if, if anyone has watched the previous LEGO Star Wars talk where we talked about our favorite sets, the First Order uh, First Order TIE Fighter was brought up. We both agreed it was the best kind of iteration of a TIE Fighter LEGO's produced oh, yet. Yeah. And, I, and I said if they use that style to make an Imperial one, that would be probably my favorite set or second or third favorite set. So I'm very excited for this. Uh, LEGO finally like nailed the cockpit design yeah. um, with that new piece mainly and utilizing that. So... Yeah, it looks beautiful. It's gonna be so nice to get though. I'll definitely get at least two of them to flank next to Darth Vader's Tie Fighter. Yep. So then I'll have that and Kylo's. Oh man, it, so. I, I can't wait to just get so many of those things. I mean, Imperial like battles have never been easier to make. Like with this new battle packs with that had the like stormtroopers in it. Now we're starting to get the like basic forms of the Tie Fighters. And it's really cool to finally start being able to like round out your Imperial mm-hmm, army. For sure. Um, I also wanted to like point out that there's the um, the Mimbin uh, Stormtrooper has a new helmet mold 
Um, and so, like, how do you feel about that? Do you think this is, like, a, a hint at things to come, them moving towards a different helmet mold for the normal stormtroopers? Or I mean, how long do you think it'll take them to get to that point? It's very possible. Uh, I kind of thought LEGO had pr- nailed it pretty well with the most recent I did, too. Um, although, I will say that, like, I know a lot of people have had printing issues with them. Yeah. yeah. And so, because <laughs> I, think, I think because of all the line details and stuff, it's, like, and where the there's kind of like an indent on the top of the helmet right, yeah. where all that lines up. It's like very precise. And so with a figure that's produced as much as, as it is, a lot of like kind of defect, not necessarily defected ones, but just imperfect ones get out there. Yeah. So I could see them if this is like, they're doing a new mold so they can try to get the eyes to like stay in place and yeah. stuff going forward. Yeah, that's a good point. So that's where I can see this being a new mold. If I, if it is, I'm going to be kind of sad because I have a lot of those old ones and I think they look really great. But The only way they can make it right is by giving us a battle pack of four of just the new ones. It's going to be four Mimbon troopers, though. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. I feel like he looks special enough to where there probably won't be a ton of them. Hopefully. It's Captain Phasma's dad. Yeah, Cap- <laughs> Daddy Phasma. Um, chilling. Uh, the other thing is you get, not, we also get another one of those uh, hats. It's not like a normal, traditional, like, Imperial Officer torso, because they're all covered in, like, this green stuff. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm guessing it's something, like, native to the planet. Sure. But we do get the hat, and the hat is not covered in green <laughs> stuff, which means I'll be able to use it. So yes. it's going to, like, incentivize me to get a few more of these, just so I can have more of those hats. And then, apparently, like, the sky is Han Solo. Now, this is actually kind of interesting, because I think um, it has been basically said that like Han Solo was in the Imperial Navy at some point, right? I don't know if that's in the official synopsis. That was in the old extended universe. Right, yeah, that but that's a a, that's like a thing that was put out that's there. A, that's so do you thing, think yeah. it's possible that like this is not a disguised Han Solo, but rather like an actual like Imperial Han Solo that may be in the movie? I don't think it's going to be uh, Han Solo in the Imperial Academy or anything. They okay. may even go that route, but from what I read of the synopsis, it says something about Han Solo and friends doing like daring heist or something along those lines okay. so i'm pretty sure this is going to be at some point where they're they're sneaking on to an imperial facility to steal something or so, so we get a, a third straight star we, wars movie yes with like a, an infiltration of the bad guys it's not a star wars movie unless someone dresses up like the empire or first order that is just, true you can't have a star wars movie without it now right <laughs> just like you can't have a star wars movie about without uh, lightsaber battles either way oh, wait. <laughs> either either way the han solo figure and the the Woody Harrelson figure look both look pretty great, and they're very interesting looking. So right, yeah, no, I agree, I agree. So the last one for the Han Solo wave is going to be that Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. Yes. How do you feel about this thing? It's very divisive. Uh, yeah, people have said very mean things about it. Uh, <laughs> I think it looks fine. It's 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 just a different it's a different iteration of the Falcon. I think you were telling me how you, like your guess for why it's shaped like that is because it's like designed to go faster or like for right, racing yeah. or they're, they're, cause they're trying to do the Kessel run like yeah. in the most efficient manner possible. So they have to add as many horsepowers as possible. Yeah. So that they, they put that big triangle piece on the front cause yeah. that's where all the horses are. Yeah. They're just continually <laughs> running. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, so I'm not going to say that like, I'm not going to fault Lego forward and be like, Oh, they made an ugly set because I think like it's a pretty good representation of what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. The problem is just like, I probably, I, I don't want to build it. Like it, I have, there's no place in my heart that tells me like, Oh, like I want this thing sitting somewhere in my collection. Well, if you end up really liking the solo movie, you have to break down your custom Falcon and build the, the big white goofy blue one. Oh God. I mean, honestly, like, custom I, I, UCS. I, honestly, if that happened, if, if, it, if there were a case where I'd watch that movie and I'd like it that much, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Like, I would love a Star Wars movie that would compel me to destroy my Falcon and build it. <laughs> like, if it's that good, it would be a really good Star Wars movie. It'd have to be a really good Star Wars movie. Nah, it's a uh, problem will happen, though. Um, <laughs> so, I guess now we can move on to some of the more, like, obscured rumored sets. Yeah, the later well, we've, summer we've sets. Seen, we've seen some, like, decent pictures of some bad pictures of the other ones but we can start with the ones that we know we've get we've gotten hd pictures of so there's of course the dagobah set which yes. people have been clamoring for for such a long time i think i have as well i think this set actually holds a dear place in my heart because i remember being like 10 years old in toys r us and they had the x-wing that came with yoda's hut on mm-hmm. display but they didn't have the set there and i didn't have an x-wing yet either so i would 
remember I going there and they had it on display for like years after the set had retired. <laughs> and I would look at it and I would like call an assistant around like, is there a way for me to just buy this set? I didn't know that it was glued. If it was if I knew it was glued, I definitely wouldn't have wanted okay. it. But I was like, Can I just buy this? And they're like, No, we're gonna have to send it back. And I remember just being so disappointed, the fact that one, I couldn't have an X Wing, but two, I couldn't have like the Dagoba Luke with the Yoda's hat. Like it was just it was a pretty cool like combination of sets. Mm -hmm. And now they're finally producing an updated version of it with um, Luke in his green tank top, Yoda on his back, dirty R two D two. Um, I think it's a, it's a great set. No, they, especially like it just I, this. It's almost kind of like the next iteration of the Octo set, where it's yeah. like they're giving us things that we really want for a pretty you know. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be like a thirty dollars set. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, like they, like. The, the dirty R2-D2, I think, alone is like, they, like, they totally didn't even have to put that in there. Yeah. They could have put a regular R2-D2 in. And yeah. like, I don't think many people would have even brought it up as a complaint. But the fact that we're getting like a unique version of R2-D2, plus a version of Luke that we haven't gotten in a long time, yeah. and a new Yoda that we don't get very often. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great set. I'm very excited. I think most people are probably share our sentiments about it. Yeah, especially since that like Dagobah Luke is such an expensive figure, like the yellow version. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really nice to have an updated version. Yes. And hopefully, like for the people that do want to collect the old ones, that, that'll drive the price down on the old one a little bit if you want like a complete collection of Dagobah Lukes. So, really happy about that. Now, let's move on to the Jedi Battle Pack. I think this one has been a little bit controversial in itself. Like, brought up earlier about, you know, battle packs that allow you to army build. And a lot of people have been saying, I don't like this because I don't need to army build Jedi. Which, I can understand. Like, I understand, like, maybe, like, people don't want to have, like, ten Ki-Adi Mundis. But, I think you, it's... Like, you have to kind of, you have to take it for what it is, right? Like, people are always saying, like, you know, I wish there were a cheaper way to get minifigures. Mm -hmm. And, like, this is it. Lego obviously can't sell the minifigures by themselves. So this is kind of the compromise. You get it in a battle pack. So you get two Jedi for pretty cheap. Like, the last time we got two Jedi in a set, it was, like, the clone turbo tank. So this is a pretty cheap way for us to get those. But and then two great Jedi minifigures. Exactly, too, yeah. Two, Kiyadi, Mundi, yep, one we haven't gotten in a really long time. Because the last one was a Clone Wars version. So yeah. that's like if people, you know, don't yeah. like that, the big eyed Clone Wars characters, that you're getting an updated Kiyadi Mundi and an updated Barris Afi. Yep, with the is, new skirt mold. Yeah, no. And I think that's really nice, so she doesn't have to be super tall compared to everyone else. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I really do like that. And then, um, moving on to the second part, um, a lot of people were expecting this to have Phase 2 clones. It is not. It has Phase 1. I know you had some feelings about that, so... Well, I was initially looking forward to getting more Phase 2 clones. I've always liked Phase 2 over Phase 1. Mm -hmm. And, you know, plain white Phase 2 clones, even though they weren't really in the movie a whole lot. But we've... I would... It's the basic version, so it's, yeah. I feel like that's the most one you'd want to have, like, a solid core of. So if you... You know, especially if you're making, like, Clone Wars era mocks to have just, like, what plain white guys throw in with probably your 212 or whatever. Because right. they, you, you would assume they would have them both. I think on Utapau you actually see some plain white ones there as well. Yeah, you do. Um, so, yeah, I was initially looking forward to Phase 2, um, but, and, and kind of disappointed when I learned it was going to be Phase 1. But I've kind of, I've come around to it, I think. Uh, like Phase 2, we haven't gotten a whole lot of Phase, the updated Phase 1. Right, what yeah. was it? In plain white, they came in, like, two or three sets. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm... I've, I've come around to it. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this thing so much, dude. Like, I'm all, I've am i always been um, Phase 1 over Phase 2, primarily because the Phase 1 ones were, like, the harder ones for me to get when I was little, so I think I've kind of carried on that desire to have more Phase 1 clones, especially since the updated ones look so nice. So having a battle pack to be able to get so many of them, I think having the Phase 1 plain white clones, like, in mass quantities, will increase the potential of mods you can do more than having a mass quantity of phase two clones so i think this is definitely the right way to go for that and hopefully um i can do a geosmosis mock at some point and this will definitely help out with it yeah absolutely um are you gonna are you gonna try to get more of the like like printed ones to fit on your the phase ones you already have like all the like officer ones that we have oh yeah Not so officer ones the higher ranked ones i mean yeah i'm, I'm probably gonna have to because i'm the battle pack ones have the leg printing right um, about 99% sure they were. Yeah, so I mean, I'm just trying to sacrifice like a few of them to give leg frame to, <laughs> to all the... the more important ones. Yeah, to the uh, the ranked ones. Um, yeah, no big deal. I, I'm sure I'll get, you know, like dozens of this battle pack. So, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm buying so many battle packs now, it's ridiculous. Like, I remember, like, I skipped out on so many of the great ones. Like, I didn't buy any of the caching battle packs in the store. Didn't buy any of those, those other battle packs. Those are legendary, And those now I'm just, like, I'm spending all my money on battle packs, man. I, I can thank you for that. Appreciate it, Garrett. <laughs> um, so then now we're going to look at the uh, Anakin Starfighter set. So it's the basically the Clone Wars version of Anakin Starfighter. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about it? I'm pretty excited for this set. Um, okay. the, the first 
you know, the first Clone Wars set I got, which was also like one of the first Clone Wars sets released, was Anakin Starfighter. Yeah. Um, and I still have that one built. It, it's <coughs> has a special place in my heart, I guess. That mm -hmm. was kind of in a time where I wasn't collecting a whole lot of sets, but I got that one because I was like, oh, it's Anakin. I would like to have an Anakin figure. I didn't realize how ugly the Clone Wars ones yeah, were yeah. At, the <laughs> at the time, I guess. Yeah. Um, so it's really nice to get one, you know, 10 years later, like over 10 years later. And it'll be cool to get a, hopefully it's, uh, I would assume it's going to be a Clone Wars style Anakin, but not in the Clone Wars style. He's yeah, with a normal his, face. Yeah, he'll have like his like black armor shoulder pauldrons yeah. or whatever. So I'm excited for it. I, it'll be cool to have an updated version of that ship. Honestly, I can't really say I'm looking forward to it. Like I could actually see myself skipping this set. I have no attachment to the Clone Wars Anakin. No attachment to that but ship. You can put it with all your Jedi Starfighters. I mean, not really. It's not the, <laughs> it's not the same thing. I mean... I don't know. I just, I, I'm not a fan. I, I can't say I have any attachment to it. Like, I don't think it's a bad set. I think like you know it's fine for what it is. Like it looks good from the blurry pictures we've seen. But it's not something I can really see myself like getting excited for. I don't. I don't think I'm missing anything by not having that ship in my collection. Fair. Um, so then, now let's move on to the sand crawler. I think it's kind of hard to talk about this one because like there's like we know so. There's very few things about it. Yeah. Like, even the mini big selection is unclear, but we can kind of talk about the concept that we are getting, I think, like a $150 sand crawler. Um, do you think that like there's a, a market for it? Do you think there's people out there looking for sand crawler after the big one? I, it's hard to say. I think that there is. Like, I mean, I didn't get the UCS sand crawler, and that's why I would say I am looking forward to this set, because it is the sand crawler is something that's like... I don't know, it's not in Star Wars a whole lot, and it's not like a cool ship or anything, but it's pretty iconic, I yeah. think, and LEGO's done it various times that to where the Sandcrawler LEGO set, I think, is pretty iconic for what it is. Right. So I'm looking forward to it in, for that, and because I missed the UCS one, and I, and I also don't really have any, I've never felt very strongly about the UCS one. Yeah. I felt it was very skippable, it just wasn't for me. Right, yeah. No. Spending all that money for that wasn't Yeah, $300 for, it to me. for the big box, so with the... With the uh, that handsome Squidward figures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to come back to the nostalgia, those are a couple yeah. of the over-detailed figures. Yeah. They learned Luke kind of regressed a little bit. Right, yeah. One. But, uh, yeah, and a lot of great droid figures are in that, too. But oh, yeah. But I think people that are in the boat, same as me, where they're, like, weren't willing to spend $300 for a UCS version, but maybe would be okay with spending $150 for a, a smaller one, but with some of the same figures and just, right. I mean, the set, from what we can tell, it's very blurry, but it looks nice. It has the shape and everything. So. Right, yeah, no, I think, um, I'm most interested in seeing the figures in this. Hopefully we get some unique things in it. Hopefully we get a less handsome Squidwardy Owen Lars figure. Maybe yeah. even an Aunt Maru figure. That would be pretty That crazy. would be pretty sweet. Get her son's um, little vest and everything. Yeah, awesome. yeah, exactly, exactly. So hopefully we get that one. And now finally, this is a set I know that you've been looking forward to. Yes. We're getting an original trilogy X-Wing. I'm very excited for it. Yep. I'm going to buy like eight. That's, that's <laughs> an exaggeration. That's a lot of money. I'll probably buy like three. Okay. No, that's, um, a good, that's a good number. No, the X-Wing, the 2012 X-Wing, I've actually, I have, you know, several of them in my collection now, but yeah. it's one that I didn't buy when it was out, and I got very fortunate several times. I brick I brick linked one because I did the Blue Squadron one, but the other two I got very lucky and was able to find them for reasonable prices. Right. Um, and I've always thought like I've always thought one that one held up pretty well, but I would have liked to have seen an update, especially with the resistance ones. Yeah. They're they're obviously different models of X Wing, but the resistance ones are just better detailed and better overall models than the twenty twelve X Wings are. Absolutely. So getting new original trilogy X Wings <coughs> That are going to be that classic style, you know, it's going to be able to switch between two different ones, hopefully. Yeah, it comes with two pilots, so I imagine I, there would be different, like, yeah. markings for the wings. Getting an updated X-Wing, uh, updated X-Wing pilot Luke. Yes, and always then nice. hopefully, I'm, a, I'm hoping it's Big Star Glider. That seems to be what it's looking like. The droid, though, is kind of throwing people off, because it's not, like, his droid, I think, in the picture. But it, Yeah, the picture, it's kind of blurry, it's, like, kind of grayish, isn't it? <laughs> Um, yeah, so no, I think it is his droid, but if you look at the name, his first name looks too long. Oh, but I think all the names on them are all the same length. I think it's just... Oh, like really? The, yeah. Okay, then, yeah, that could actually explain a lot. Yeah. yeah. Biggs would make sense, him and his friend. I think it'd be nice to get, like, Biggs's face with the mustache and yes, the visor with the, print. with the visor print, that would be... what I'm most excited amazing. for. Amazing, so... And it'll be nice to get more updated X-Wing pilot torsos, because yep. we haven't gotten them since that one micro fighter. Yeah, Which is, like, the much. most expensive of all micro fighters, yeah. besides oh maybe God, the Phase dude. 2 clone trooper. But, uh, so, to get more X-Wings, more updated X-Wings in the, the new styles, and the new cockpit piece, especially, 
and yeah, more X-Wing pilots. I'm extremely excited for this set. Yeah, no, I think it's a very timely set for them to release, especially with the release of the updated TIE Fighter. Like, it really just makes sense. Like, maybe the X-Wings aren't going to be in the Han Solo movie, but the fact that the TIE Fighter is, and, like, strategically using that Mm -hmm. to throw in an X-Wing in there as well, I think that's really a really cool thing for LEGO to do. Um, And, I mean, I'm probably not going to buy more than one just because I like my mock version Mm -hmm. of it, but I can definitely see where this is going to fill a hole in a lot of people's collections who are looking for, you know... TIE, or not TIE fighter, but X wings to have because yeah. we've gotten an A wing recently, we've gotten a Y wing recently. This is kind of like the main ship for you to like fill out some of your uh, Rebel. This forces. was the last in the lineup if we're going by recent releases. You I, know, yeah, yeah, because the B wing would have come right before that, and then the most recent A wing, and or I guess the most would have been Y wing and then A wing, yeah. Now the X wing, now X wing. So. Yeah, no, it, everything comes full circle, guys. This is why re releases are important because you get good updated versions with new pieces of classic like star wars ships yeah i mean if someone like me with like a, a, a pretty ex, uh you know extensive collection even missed out on the last x-wing i can't right. imagine how many other people are out there that missed out on an original trilogy x-wing exactly yeah i've been waiting for this so it's a and it, yeah as you said with the tie fighter out like it's gonna be so it's gonna be really cool to once again have you know x-wings and tie fighters on shelves yes so yes what a what a good time to be a lego star wars fan it's the golden age of lego star wars hey the here and now you heard it here first <laughs> so guys that's going to finish up this video i'm hoping you enjoyed the segments that we had we're going to moving forward we're going to try to make this thing a more regularly scheduled thing i know a lot of you have been asking about it we just haven't had the time lately but now we're trying to kind of like hammering down how our schedules can work together and we can do these things more frequently so that's going to finish it out guys as i always say if you like what we do go ahead support the video by hitting the like button support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and also follow us on Instagram. I'm on Instagram as Rich Boy J. He's on Instagram as Garrett underscore Bricks. Garrett underscore Bricks. You know where we're at. Follow us, guys. Also, one last thing. I know I've been saying that a lot, but this is the actual last <laughs> thing. Um, Crate Mock. So we're going to do another live stream on that this Friday at 3 p.m. Central Time. So make sure you come check us out there, guys. We just got an order of parts in that's going to really help with us getting a lot of progress done on the ground you won't want to miss it it's going to be a great time um and that's pretty much it you got anything else to say bye guys see you soon